you for the sermon that you've given me, Lord, that, uh, you know, just, there's a revival that is going on, even in the church. The things that you're doing in, in our church, you know, you're, you're preparing us. And, Father, I just ask that you would take us to the throne room, Lord Jesus. You are the rabbi with authority. So come and preach through me tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Come and preach through me tonight. And I thank you for the new, you know, you, you told me today, ask for the mantle of Moses. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, I just declare the mantle of the anointing um, given to us through Jesus Christ as well as the, the, the mantle that you've laid upon me for, for the anointing of, of Moses, Lord. We thank you that that is here tonight. I thank you for the ability to articulate the word and for all of us to hear it with spiritual uh, as well as natural ears, Lord, that we will come away with, we will come away, Lord, changed. Hallelujah. And I thank you that just as it was last Sunday at Life Song Church with uh, Isaiah Seldavar, this is going to be a night, in spite of there being a sermon, this is going to be a night of encounter. That even as I preach, the Spirit of God is going to transcend my words and transfigure all of us as He did in that Mount of Transfiguration to Jesus, Lord. We will leave this room, this training center, with the glory of God. We will go out in the power of the Spirit of God. And I hear the Lord saying, Pastor Judy, that He said, I am now... I have now opened your books of destiny. I have now opened the seals to your books of destiny. And everything that has been written in your book, behold, now it will come to pass. So, Lord, we thank you for it. We just thank you for it, that even on YouTube and the podcast, Lord, there's going to be such an online revival, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, I was going to originally minister on the watchman anointing. But I was listening to Becca Greenwood yesterday on a Oasis Church sermon that she did. And the Holy Spirit basically arrested me and said, no. He said, it's time for my people to come into the the transfiguration anointing. It's time for you for us to, uh, I'm hearing not him now saying, it's time for my church to mature in the faith. It's time, um, and, and so this is what we're going to be talking about tonight. The purpose of this sermon is to wet your whistle for an encounter with Christ. Hallelujah. To bring about a longing in, in, in your heart to say, Lord, I want to be transfigured. I know that my, perfect, my ultimate redemption, my ultimate perfection will not come until you come back. But just as you did before you died on the cross, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would transfigure me. And so that is what, that is the, that is the, uh, the prayer that by the end of this sermon, I, I hope and pray that all of us will begin to pray, including those online that, that know Christ. And, uh, and, and just, I believe, you know, because God's preparing us for something big, mm -hmm. bigger than, than we I even realize. That's right. I believe and, and, and the remnant that we have now is going to grow bigger as a result of what God's doing in the remnant. Praise God. <laughs> you know, people are going to go, wait a minute, what is this? <laughs> and, you know, and I, and I look at it this way, you know, we, we talked about, um, you know, the Antichrist people will be saying, well, our, and our Messiah has come, where is your Jesus? But really, the world's going to be saying, Wow. He may not have come bodily, but we see him through you and you and you and you and you. And we want that. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right. So, our first scripture, thank you, Lord, is this is this is two scriptures. It's um, Hebrews five, verses twelve to fourteen, and on over to chapter six, verses one to six. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14, and 6, 1 to 6. 5, 12 to 14? Yes, sir. And 6, verses 1 to 6. Okay. And it says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Huh? Go ahead, I'm worried, sir. Okay. But solid food belongs to those who are who are full of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. And, you know, I, I want to stop for a minute before I read on down. You know, I, one of the ways we can we can exercise our senses, spiritual senses, that is, is by way of praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And the more you pray in the Spirit, the more you'll be able to discern when something's off. Amen. And right. so God's wanting to bring us to that place where, yes, it's great to have ministers and everyone, but, you know... There's a Jennifer LeClaire talked about watchmen versus watchdogs. Watchdogs are those who are at least close to being a heresy hunter. You won't need a heresy hunter when you got the Holy Spirit who can show you, okay, there's something off about this here. Right. So, um, chapter six, verse one. Therefore. Leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God, and put him to an open shame. Now let, now let's turn to Ephesians, and I'm going to give commentary after this. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. And he gave himself some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be t children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but, speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifica edification of itself in love. So, I believe that we are entering into, there are many, many purposes for the fivefold ministry. But what I'm sensing right now is that we're moving into a time when the fivefold ministry has got to start preaching on the gifts of the Spirit. Laying on, laying hands on people, you know, um, 
training the believer how to cast out demons, heal the sick, things like that. Not that everybody may, you know, not everyone's confrontational, but when when the ministries ministers teach others how to do these things, then when the Holy Spirit leads you, you know, say you're going to a grocery store or whatever, when the Holy Spirit leads a, a believer to do such a thing, they know how to do it. Yeah. When, when, when the Holy Spirit leads someone to give a word of knowledge, you know, there, there's someone here that their, their back is hurting or they've got arthritis or whatever it may be, um, or a word of knowledge about someone's life, then they know, wait a minute, I've got a gift I didn't even know I had. And they can, you know, start to use it in stores or yeah. in, anywhere they go. Yeah. And I believe this is the reason, this is, you know, God is wanting us to be mature in Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and we've been talking about watchmen. Those that are seasoned watchmen have got to train up and coming watchmen how to be a watchman. You know, you've got to, because, you know, about how to, how, what does it mean to stand and see in the watchtower? Things like that. Um, and, and so this is, that, this is our job as ministers. Um, so, how are we doing? Good. 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 2 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 18. Basically, you're going to read the whole chapter on this one. Hang on, 2 Corinthians what? 3. 3, verses 1 to 18. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Actually, sorry guys, uh, Holy Spirit's changed directions. We're gonna read. Uh, we're gonna read the story of the transfiguration. What? what where is that at? First one we're gonna look at is Matthew seventeen. Matthew seventeen. Verses one to nine. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the scriptures of where they're found. Matthew seventeen verses one to nine is the first one. Mark nine verses one to eight. Luke eight. I know. Luke 9, verses 28 to 36. What, what, what was Mark what? Mark 9, 1 to 8. And what's the last one? Luke, Luke 9, verses 28 to 36. Okay, good. Okay, those are the three. Um, what if we don't get to tonight? We'll, but basically, they're all the same story with, with you know, each, each one gives different details, too, with it. Um... So we'll get to what we can get to tonight. But it says in Matthew 17, verses 1 to 9. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter and James and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him then Peter answered and said to Jesus Lord it is good for us to be here if you wish let us make here three tabernacles one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah while he was still speaking behold a bright cloud a bright cloud excuse me overshadowed them and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and do not be afraid. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And actually, the Spirit, as I was reading, told me that the rest of this, the rest of these passages that I gave you were our homework, but they're for, because, uh, and we're not going to read them because they're really just re repeating the same account, although they have different, you know, reporting of it. So, uh, to just continue to read that for homework, and 
And our final verse is in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 18. Does everyone have all the accounts of the transfiguration mm -hmm. written down? Okay. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need, as some others, epistles of, con of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Jesus toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Amen. But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, catch this, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Think about that. That's powerful. Uh, you know, the, the story that comes to mind in the New Testament is Peter. When, think of this, his shadow. When he would walk by and people were sick, they would get healed. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. It is powerful. In verse 10, even, And even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that, ex that excels. For if what was passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. Question, do you know the power that is in you? That's, that's just mind-blowing, isn't it? Amen. Yeah. Verse 14. But their minds were blinded. <coughs> For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts, in their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image. And if you all want to say it with me, you can. From glory, glory to, to, to glory, glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. 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 Father, we just thank you for this day. And if you all want to discuss after we pray, we can. Uh, I just thank you for this sermon, Lord. I just ask right now, and if you all would like to pray in the Spirit, I ask that you would transfigure us, Father. Lord, give us more of a taste and a hunger, Father God, for, for the transfigura transfiguring power, the glory of God, Father God. The next thing we're going to talk about is the consuming fire. Father, we just thank you that you are a consuming fire, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for sealing this word in our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go to, you can write to us at Preach Unto Them Jesus. P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73013. Again, that's Preach Unto Them Jesus, P.O. Box 7293, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73013. Or you can email us at Kingdom Advancement 252, K I N G D O M A D V A N C E M E N T 252, 
at gmail.com or you can go to www.stormministries.com and hit contact. While you're on that page, you'll, on the home page, you'll see a help our cause but, uh, heading. I mean, that's not say button, but heading. And that's where, if you would like to, you can donate to our ministry. All donations go to the Homeless Alliance and to our church. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And I want to invite you, if you enjoyed this, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. And, um, you know, if you, if you want to contact us, you can do that. Some events coming up tomorrow night. Bob Larson will be minute, will be uh, live on YouTube. He is live every Wednesday, and uh, talking Central Standard Time. It will be around eight p.m. But I would advise you while you're on YouTube, if you're on, um, if you're not on YouTube and you're listening to this on the podcast, I would advise you to log into YouTube.com or create an account. Uh, if you are interested in watching Bob Larson tomorrow night with us. And once you've created an, created an account, or if you have a Gmail account, you can just log in through your Gmail. Once you've created an, an account uh, and signed in to it, type in Bob Larson, and then go to... Uh, once your search results pop up, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. It'll say Bob Larson, and it'll have an ellipsis, and it'll say The Real Ep- Exorcist. And that's the one you want to subscribe to. And then hit the bell, notification bell. And that way, you won't even have to worry about the time zone as to where you're from, you know, and trying to... Um, worry about if you missed it or whatever it'll be it'll be you'll be notified and also the church is going to want to do something different so we will not be able to Record our services Sunday. So, what I'm going to do is before then, I'm going to prepare a message. Either me or Pastor Mickey one, however we decide to do it. Uh, prepare a message and put it on this podcast. For those of you here, that way no one will miss out on on a message. And but the next podcast that you're going to see is going to be from Pastor Mickey from last Sunday. And. Actually, I, ho- I hear the Holy Spirit saying that he's got a message, a special message, message plans, planned for me to minister this Sunday. Um, I think related to the revival or something to that effect, based off of what I'm sensing the Lord is saying. So, so yeah, I'll be ministering either before Sunday or Sunday night. And but the next podcast is going to be the Sunday service sermon from this Sunday from Pastor Mickey. So again, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, share this to as many people as possible that um, are not babes in Christ, but they're more mature in the Lord, and you and you know that. This is something that you're like, this person's ready for it.
Okay. So thank you all very much. And oh, one more thing. We are not on this podcast raising up an audi an audience, but we are raising up an army. So. Anyway, see you in the next podcast. God bless.